Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello to all you automotive industry enthusiasts out there. Welcome to AutoLine Daily. We've got some good updates on new cars, new technology, and the latest news. You know, as the European car market continues to melt down, we're seeing some strange things happen. Mercedes is heavily discounting cars, an average of 12%, and they're offering nearly $4,000 more on trade-ins. BMW is shifting tens of thousands of cars it meant to sell in Europe over to the U.S. On top of that, gasoline refiners in Europe are going to start shipping excess gasoline to the U.S. Bloomberg reports that 19 oil tankers have been booked up to ship gasoline just for the last week of October. The U.S. could get over 800,000 barrels of gasoline a day from Europe, and that should start driving down prices. You know, I saw gasoline for only $3.33 this morning, nearly 50 cents cheaper a gallon than it was just a couple of months ago here in Michigan. Cascada is Spanish for waterfall, but in automotive parlance, it translates into Opel's latest convertible. This mid-sized drop top is roughly the same size as an Audi A5. Inside, it has room for four passengers and a raft of premium features to keep them comfortable. Things like heated and cooled front seats, Nappa leather, and an adaptive suspension system. The fabric roof can be tucked away in just 17 seconds, less time than it takes to listen to this story. As for performance, the Cascada's base power plant is a 1.4 turbo that should be familiar to you Chevy Cruze owners out there. A 2-liter diesel is offered as well, but the top engine is a 1.6-liter turbo gasser with 170 horsepower. Manual and automatic 6-speed transmissions are available. Pricing and a sale date have not yet been shared. And to my jaundiced eye, the Cascada really seems more Buick than Opel. And that makes me wonder if they'll offer it in the States. With its sync system, the Blue Oval has been at the Ford front of technology. Ha <laughs> ha! The company is pushing these high-end features down to mass-market vehicles, which would have made old Henry proud of this technological populism. The move is part of CEO Alan Mulally's push to make Ford more Silicon Valley and less Rust Belt. AppLink, a feature of Sync, currently offers motorists 13 different apps they can use in the car, including things like Pandora, Twitter, and Yelp. More are in development, and naturally the challenge is to make these features easy and safe to use while driving, and that has not been an easy task. Ford has implemented marketing strategies like teasing the new Explorer on Facebook or giving away 100 Fiestas to social media members before it went on sale. But where did they get this strategy from? Chief of Marketing at Ford, Jim Farley, confirms he took inspiration from the video game industry. He's using what the video game industry calls a slow burn approach, which teases a vehicle well before its on sale date. Farley notes that 20% of Ford's marketing budget is for pre-launch projects. Mopar, Chrysler's in-house part supplier, will be jumping on a ship to Europe. For the first time since the Fiat Chrysler partnership, a Fiat vehicle, a small CUV called the Panda, will feature Mopar parts and accessories. Mopar has had a growing presence in Europe since the Fiat Chrysler merger in 2009. The CEO of Mopar, Pietro Gorlier, says that sales of original equipment parts and accessories in the U.S. have doubled since then. And I find it fascinating that Fiat is using Mopar and it shows how they really want to grow that brand globally. Recently, I got a chance to test drive the Boss 302 Mustang. You can get my instant impression right after this. Plus, we have some fun things to announce about tonight's AutoLine After Hours. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber. 
researching ways to enhance its quality and performance, and making their factories more environmentally friendly, producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again, and promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone. Anyone watching this video already knows what this car is all about. The Boss 302, and look at it. This one, particularly in the colors of the livery that they used to race in the Trans Am back circa 1970, 71, with Parnelli Jones and Peter Revson and a bunch of the others like that. This is reviving the whole thing. You better know what the specs are. I'm not going to go through them right now. I'm going to tell you what it's like to drive this thing. And what a beast. It's the only way to describe it. And especially, you notice it once you start up the engine. Just listen to the sound of it. And once you get underway, this car will only put a smile on your face. In fact, it feels like you're lining up to go Trans Am racing all on your own. But... It's got a live rear axle. It's got a very stiff suspension. And when you're going over rough pavement, it'll literally lift up the axle and move it over. It's not good on rough pavement. You know, recently I had a Camaro ZL1 to test drive with the magnetic rheological suspension. That makes all the difference on rough pavement. I sure wish the Mustang had something like that. Maybe they'll get there with the next generation. Of course, the Boss 302 is almost $20,000 cheaper than a ZL1, so I understand where it might not ride as well. Inside, it's a tight squeeze. You've got very heavily bolstered Recaro seats, and you are really packaged in there. But you know, overall, I gotta tell you, if I had a racetrack in my backyard, I would have a Boss 302 in my garage. Yeah, that car is a blast to drive. It just sounds so good. You know, there may be something old-fashioned about the internal combustion engine, but when they are done right, they sure can give you a good gut feel. Hey, on Autoline After Hours tonight, we have a great enthusiast joining us. Ho Tai Tang is not only one of the ultimate gearheads in the industry, now he's the head of engineering for Ford's global product development. He's also bringing some die-cast models of the new Focus ST to give away, so make sure you learn how you could win one of them. Plus, my super outrageous auto extremist co-host Peter DeLorenzo has come up with a trivia quiz so that a few lucky viewers can win an auto extremist t-shirt. Now that's something even I would want to win. So tune in tonight starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time and if you can't make it at that time, don't forget you can always catch it later at Autoline.tv. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We will see you tomorrow.